Hi everyone and welcome back to our YouTube channel. We're as always your hosts Arna and Carlos and today we are doing one of those revisited episodes. Yeah. Uh, we have a very popular episode here on our channel called How to Knit the Easiest Sock in the World and uh, you know we've been following that episode and we have been seeing it grown throughout the years we've been reading comments uh, you know suggestions on how to make the episode better and all of that so we have taken everything that we've read into consideration <laughs> and here we are with how to knit the easiest sock in the world 2.0 where we hopefully can answer all those questions uh, that we didn't answer the first time and i think there are especially two questions that pops up many times constantly it? it's uh, how, when do I put in the heel and yeah so how do I know when it's time to put in the heel yeah and how do you put in the scrap yarn that's another thing and when you pick it out mm. like some people are a little bit afraid of picking the yarn up and taking the scrap yarn out yes. so, so we're, we're going to show, you, show this. you these two different yeah. ways to, of doing it to begin with uh knitting the easiest sock in the world uh what is that so that's an afterthought heel uh that you put in after uh you have knitted the sock and the good thing about knitting the easiest sock in the world is that the technique is exactly the same whether you go from the cuff down mm -hmm. or whether you go from the toe up so if you already have a favorite way of knitting the sock or if you've already learned how to knit it toe up, uh, you can implement that and still get the same result as if you, you know, if you mm. prefer to do it from the cuff down. So Arne, um, if you are a complete new beginner and you have never knitted a sock again, which way would you suggest would be the easiest to learn how to knit a sock? Then I think you should start toe up. Toe up. Because then you can easily find the width of your or your foot foot yeah and we have this we brought the foot <laughs> so we have this one to show you so so in this case if you start on the toe you just increase on the in the sides like this so you you do the increases in the beginning of needle one at the end of needle two the beginning of needle three and at the end of needle four then you have the increases on the side of the foot and then you stop when you have enough stitches yeah so in usually, this case there is 14 yeah. on each and usually um so the first thing you do is you cast on and you and you uh, increase uh to make the round toe usually when you try it on you stop when all your toes are covered so when your smallest toe is completely covered that is when it's time to stop increasing and then you can knit on the round there are some numbers aren't it um, yeah. if you are using um, a sock yarn in fingering weight like the, this regia one uh, which is designed by us by the way <laughs> ding, ding. anyway if you do that then um, for an average woman's foot you will need um, 14 stitches per needle approximately yeah. so that's 56 yeah, 14 on each yeah and if you are doing a men's sock um, also in the finger weight you will need about uh, 16 on 16 each. on each needle so that will be 64 um, but this is just a number and sometimes you need less or more depending on your tension yeah. and depending on your, your foot size so that's obviously. a good thing by doing the doing it, doing it from the toe up if you have never done it before because then you get your size and you get the number of stitches. Mm. So the next time you can do it from the cuff and down, because then you know how many stitches yeah. you need. It's harder to cast on from the top and start knitting because if you if you don't have done it before, it's, it's yeah. harder. But once you've finished a sock for yourself, you will know how many stitches you need. And from that time and onwards, it'll be super easy to just calculate. Uh, I do actually have to say I enjoy going from the toe up. Yeah, I think I think it's quite nice, nice uh, actually. to do that. I mean, you get you get your, your all your increases done rather quickly, and then you're just knitting in the round, trying the sock on as you go, and then adding the the waist yarn and then knitting mm. knitting up. And on this one now, I've knitted up to the waist yarn because people ask when do I put in the waist yarn and where do I put the heel. So on this foot, you can see. I'm up yeah, to well, the heel kind of now. So if you think about this as a squared piece, the whole heel. Yeah. 
then this is the time. And think about this here. Think about this space here. Let me point it out with a needle. So think about this space here as an imaginary ankle bone. So when, your, uh, when you try it on, when the sock aligns with your ankle bone, that is the time that you set in uh, the heel. So your ankle bone is actually key mm -hmm. to this. If you think, if you look at your foot uh, and you see where your ankle bone is, so just before the ankle bone starts, that's where you put in the put heel. Put in the scrap yarn. So now I'm going to show you how we put in the scrap yarn. So I leave the yarn from the sock yarn that just stays there. And then I knit two needles with scrap yarn. So, you don't think about this as part of the sock. What did you call it, Carlos? Yeah, well, um, I'll tell you when you finish okay. it. So, it's easy to explain it once you're done. So, and then another needle. And we prefer doing uh, socks on four needles because then we kind of know easier when we, where the heel is and where the increases are. But you can do a magic loop. You can, you can do can anything. Do circular needle. There's many ways to do yeah. this. So you can do them on three needles if you prefer. Uh, do it the way you're comfortable. Do it the way it's logical for you to do it. So That's now, what we say. So now you put the waist yarn in. Yeah, so and this then... will be where the heel is coming. And then you go back to the sock yarn, which is on the fourth needle now. So mosquitoes here. Go and on. then you just knit over the scrap yarn and continue knitting the sock. And now when you've done that you can just knit as much as you like depending on how long you want the sock to be because the heel will be finished when you finish the rib yeah. and the whole thing. And once you've knitted all the stitches on the scrap yarn, you just keep going, as Arne will show you in a few seconds, to the next needle yeah. as well. So now I've finished the heel part. So I just tighten so just up continue. this one a little bit and then I continue knitting on the round. Yep. So then when you finish the whole thing, it will look like this one. Yeah. And so now let me explain uh, what this actually this line is. So if you think of this line here as the equator, you think of it as an imaginary line that actually doesn't exist. Now, on this side of the sock, you have an extra row of stitches, which is this white row here. On this row, you don't have it. So there's actually one row of stitches more on the other on the other side than on this side but it's an imaginary line and they actually don't exist think of it as they're in the air um, on hold pretty much uh, waiting for you to open this later on to put your afterthought heel in so once you put the heel in you will remove these stitches and they will no longer exist and then you'll go back to having the same amount of stitches on this side as on that side. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, so I can remove the scrap the scrap yarn now so you can see how that works. So we can just go in here and then you pick up the stitches over and under the scrap yarn. It doesn't matter which way you hold it as long as you pick up the stitches. And you see on this one, so that's the first stitch on that, that side. So you just place all the stitches like this pick up one leg of in the stitch above the scrap yarn and I I normally put it pick up with uh, one needle on each side and then I divide them later when I start knitting but you can put in four stitches now if you like to. Mm. it doesn't matter so we do the whole side. I think you need to do both sides. And yeah, take and both sides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is first row. So that's the last one. And then on the other side, we do the same. And you see which stitch is it when you pull the scrap yarn. And it doesn't matter if you do this leg or that leg. 
because uh, if the st stitches are twisted when you get them on the needle, you just knit them the right way. You, s you say, straighten them up. Mm -hmm. I think maybe I should use more needles on this one. I got a little bit. And you know, if you if you should like miss a stitch, you will find it when you take the scrap yarn out. So it's easy to fix. But I don't think you will, because on this yarn it's really easy to see the stitches, so it shouldn't be a big problem. So let's see now. And I think it should be fourteen on each needle in this one. There you go. Let's see how many stitches I got. So, three, six, ten. Fourteen on each. So now you have secured all the stitches. Then you take the scrap yarn out, just pulling it out like this. And now you have the stitches that you're going to work on. So this is the easiest mm. sock in the world. Absolutely. <laughs> easiest sock in the world with a scrap yarn that is maybe not the easiest <laughs> to take out scrap yarn to take no. out because it does unravel i just took a yarn that was thin yeah i think this but yarn is i'm not sure which yarn yeah. it is because it's an imaginary line yeah. it really doesn't matter it's actually the i think it's of the yarn you could get like a really thick one too if you wanted and uh, that's still probably not hard, harder yeah but this 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 is cotton yeah like, and it's unraveling as you yeah the plies and <laughs> yeah but you're not well you can use the same scrap yarn for the next sock so and there are also yarns in one color that you can mix yeah with this if you want this to have yarn. a solid colored yarn yeah so if you want to have a solid color on the heel or maybe the rib and the toe, you can also do that with this kind of yarn. You just have to remember where you started on the yarn if you want to have two looking the same. But I will show you the little tips for that also. We're not doing fast forward on this one. I don't know. You can tell the story while I'm doing this or well, um, I'm just very excited to see you open that and uh, try it on and see the whole what it looks like. I'm going to try it on the foot. So I'm going to take this out and then we, we knit one round and then we so we can divide the stitches and then we put it on the foot again. Yeah. And then you will see how it opens up. And then I think uh, Oops. we'll have to talk about a potential hole in the heel yeah. that, and how to fix that as well, just in case. Because sometimes that happens when you knit. And sometimes it heel. doesn't. I mean, it's. Uh, yeah, you never know, actually. Like, sometimes you can make a sock and there's no holes and mm. but you if have you, no clue what you did. But if you do this for the first time and uh, you open it up and you start knitting it around and you suddenly see that you're going to get a hole on one side, do not despair. It happens, and we're going to show you as well how to fix that before we end the episode. So it's coming. So there. No, this one is many yarns now. It opens up. Yeah. So there you go. So now you can you can start knitting from from the side of the of the sock. You said you have the. The increases there, so you know this is the side, and the same on this side. And it doesn't matter which side you start from. So, but we can start on this side. And then, when you look at the yarn, 
you can start where the, the color is changing. So you know for the next sock you will have two looking the same. Mm -hmm. So find a nice place where something happens on the yarn. You see? I think we have to take away all this the purple or lilac. So this is scrap this is scrap yarn for another sock. So let's see now, where does it change? There was a lot of lilac hair. But it's... It's changed. Oh, there is changed. And there is red. And that's the red one. So there's a red one in... Okay, so let's start on the first... Where there's the first red one is coming. And then... You didn't have to. You could have started it anywhere, to be honest. No, because I want to have two heels looking the same. Oh, okay. Then you have to do it. Yeah. Because now <laughs> I'm going to keep this tail. So I, for the next sock, I will remember that I started when the purple went red. So that's where I start. So I'll start winding this up for you so that yeah. you don't get a tiny... Oh my God, that's a lot of... Look at that. It's endless. But now you see when I picked up the stitches from the scrap yarn, these are now twisted so to tighten or straighten them up I knit now in the in the back loop kind of because it will normally look like this on the needle so you knit in front but now it's twisted but this you you see this as you go so you just uh, knit the right way 9 10 11 12 oops sorry uh, I lost the stitch there. Take this one up. And that's what I said. If you lose a stitch, it's easy to pick it up. And I lost one stitch. So, three. One more on that needle. And then. The next one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And fourteen. So now this side is okay and then you go to the next needle to just tighten up the yarn when you go from one needle to the other and now you knit 14 into this needle so let me see it's this one this one was a bit tight so I just have to fix it three Four, five, six, I'm holding my breath. Mm, yeah, and I'm trying to, <laughs> I made a knot here. Aren't I? Hell no, but we're not going to use that yarn anyways, it doesn't matter. Mm. Three, six. If you have a needle, I can just borrow quickly. <laughs> I was just going to help you, and now look what I've done. So, and now I need a needle. Oh, okay. So, on this one, all the stitches came up twisted, so you, I had to knit all of them in the back loop to straighten them up. Because if I knit in the front on this one, the stitch will be twisted. So you have to go in the back. So now sh the, all the stitches should be secured. So the first round is just a knit round. And you see now, was, that was not, that was this one. So now when you start knitting on the round, sometimes there will be a hole on this side. So let's knit one round and see what happens. And on this one I did um, the fish, 
I think this is called a fish mouth increase. Fish lips. Fish lips. So in, on this one, I increased in the end of each needle instead of doing like on this one. See the two different toes. This one has the increases on the, in the sides, and this one has has them more around. Mm. So then, for the heel, I will do the same, but with decreases in the end of the needle. So I hold on to the t this tail from the start, so it's not so loose, and, and you tighten it up, and then you knit to the end. And then, when there's three stitches left, you knit two together and knit one. You can also knit the two last together, but I kind of like to have, I like to have that stitch after the decrease to secure everything. Then go to the next one. And you see, also when you knit from the finger like this, you grab, when you go from one needle to the other, you grab the yarn again and you have the chance to tighten it up so you don't get what they call ladders. And if you get ladders, you can knit the, the last stitch, no, the first stitch on the next needle all the time, but then you will move the starting point around. So I do one more of this. And two together and one. So now we're on the other side and you see this probably will make a hole. So there's a little hole there, so we can show you later how we fix the hole. Yes. So let's let's put it on now and just to see how it how it looks. So now it's nice to have this one. Very nice to have that, yes. <laughs> So we put it in. It's nicer than putting it on our foot. Oh, I can't get it over. Okay, it comes. <laughs> it would be easier maybe on a human being. I think it will, yeah. yeah but now you see. This is a little bit too small for this foot, but now you see the opening. So that's where the heel is coming, and then you do the decrease. Yeah, with this 90 all. degree angle here. Yeah, so that's where the heel comes. And then you just keep knitting and uh, decreasing until... Uh, it, uh, until you have like four stitches yeah. left maybe, and then you just pull the yarn through the last four stitches and tighten it up. Yeah, and once you do once you do that, you get the heel looking exactly like the toe, and it'll look a little bit weird uh, in the beginning. But once you start wearing the sock, it will actually shape to your foot yeah. beautifully. And after once or twice that you've worn it, you won't actually see that um, that very sharp toe and very sharp heel. It's so like a miracle. It's a miracle. So and now, if you see if you have holes. This will be a hole, and you can actually, this one you could also, also tighten this up with the tail, but you can also go in the back and lift one of the stitches. Let me see if you just lift up one of these and knit them together. Oh, it came on the wrong side. So you lift up stitches and knit them together. Together, and then you tighten up the hole because I did it now on the second round that's a little bit too too early but we don't have the time to knit so many rounds that you this will go on forever if I can find the right stitch should be with this this one Normally I would knit maybe one or two rounds more and then I tighten them up. But you see that now it disappears because you lift up the stitches 
the stitch from the back. And then there's another thing. When you start your sock, like on this one, I started when the dark blue went over to the light blue. And when you see the report, the next time you do, when you do the second sock, you just see the reports and then you wind up the yarn until you're back mm -hmm. to this place where the dark blue became light blue. And that's when you cast on your stitches and then you will have two looking the same. Yep. And then you also have the tail from the heel so you can have the same heel on the second sock. Yeah. So this is the uh, easiest sock in the world revisited. We also have several episodes on the easiest sock in the world. This uh, particular episode is meant to be uh, an addition to what we already have. We've got the easiest sock in the world. We've got the knee, the heel of the easiest sock in the world. Mm -hmm. We have the cast on. We have. I think we even have a video on the um, on this fish lips. Uh, I think we have that yeah. also. So and also, we also did the, on this one. We did like the closed cast the on. The closed toe cast oh, on. Oh, this is a normal cast on. So there's a ton of other uh, sock videos here on our YouTube channel that we hope you will enjoy. And uh, the idea is that you enjoy those together with what we've shown you today. So this is just uh, some complimentary extra additional information. And I think we did it slow now. I think we did it quite slow, yeah. I hope. So <laughs> we hope that you have enjoyed this episode, this sock making episode. And if you have, please give us a big thumbs up. Uh, like and subscribe and engage with our channel as that helps us a lot. Once you're a subscriber, turn on those notification bells so that you never miss an episode. And uh, for additional content, uh, consider becoming a member of Arne and Carlos, the channel. Yeah. Uh, for a small fee every month, you will get badges, emojis, uh, Knitting shenanigans, cooking uh, shenanigans as well. <laughs> We've got 15 minute catch ups um, and a lot of other fun features on our channel. And you will also be the first one to know when we're going on tours. Yep. Hi, we're Arnan Carlos, and thank you for choosing our YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching our videos as well. And if you like what you see here, we would love it if you would give us a big thumbs up, like, and subscribe to our channel. Also, uh, lots of people are curious about our membership. So here's a little sneak peek of what you get as additional content if you do choose to become a member. Hello, members of the YouTube channel. I know you're waiting for me. I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Yeah, but we just had lunch and I have to clean my kitchen. I need to clean my counter. Cool. I think Eric is ready. approaching. Yeah. Take a close up on Eric now. Good morning and welcome to uh, Olesund. Yes. Welcome to our happy place here on YouTube. Hello. So go check it out by going to the Arne and Carlos channel and then checking out the join button that is that you'll find next to the subscribe button. So thank you so much for watching and we will be back with a new tutorial very, very soon. Bye. Bye. See you next time.